Welcome back to Jerusalem Dateline. They are a people without a country. And now the Kurds are facing a vicious assault from the terrorists of ISIS. Is the United States doing enough to help them? Gary Lane has a look at the crisis facing the Kurds and the history of these remarkable people. The ancient people known as the Kurds are scattered throughout the Middle East. They've suffered extreme persecution over the centuries, including a poison gas attack launched against them by Saddam Hussein in March 1988. 12,000 Kurds died an agonizing death. They now control this region in northeastern Syria, and Iraqi Kurdistan has welcomed Christians fleeing ISIS atrocities. Kurds long for a country they can call their own. This is a dream of every Kurdish citizens. Every ethnic and every nationality have a right to have their own independent states. A referendum on independence could soon be voted on by Iraqi Kurds, but Iran and Turkey oppose the creation of a Kurdish country. The Kurdish Workers' Party has fought Turkey for the past 30 years. Turkey views the Kurds as a greater threat than the Islamic State jihadists. Instead of fighting ISIS, the Turkish Air Force recently bombed Kurdish fighters near the border. The Turks uh, are acting with the slogan, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. So ISIS is now, in that case, a friend of Turkey. And that further complicates U.S. efforts to stop ISIS. In the book, The Miracle of the Kurds, best-selling author Stephen Mansfield explains why the Kurds need Western support and how a Kurdish nation could serve as a model for the future of the Middle East. Earlier, Gary spoke with Stephen Mansfield in our U.S. newsroom about the Kurdish people and why he wrote the book. Most Americans don't even know Kurds. No, they don't. Uh, what can you tell us about In fact, them? I've had some funny moments where I've said I'm going to talk about Kurds and somebody will say, you mean the breakfast food? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really delighted that the Kurds have come to the forefront of our news cycle and, and of our, our times. Uh, because they're pretty amazing people. They consider themselves descendants of the ancient Medes, so we're actually reading about their ancestors in our Bibles. Um, they were denied nationhood after World War I, um, and now after Saddam's atrocities against them, finally the West began to pay attention. And look, look at the timing, now they're on the forefront against ISIS, one of the most vicious enemy civilizations known. Why don't people like them? What's the problem? Well, pe people do now, but throughout their history, they, they really have been horribly treated. You know, they were after World War I, they were promised their own nation. Uh, Will, President Wilson's 14 points promising autonomy for uh, local people groups. It was denied through some treaties that were agreed to secretly in Europe. Uh, then they were mistreated by the Iraqi monarchy and then by Saddam, of course. Um, and so they, they say, we have no friends but the mountains. We are a people without friends. Um, I think that's changing, and I'm glad for my Kurdish friends that that's the case. They have Syrian Kurds, they have Iraqis, Yazidis, Christians as well, yes. flooding into Kurdistan. They're welcoming them. How are they being treated, especially the Christians there? Well, the, the, when, the, when the Christians were fleeing other Middle Eastern countries over the last years in this Christian flight that we're hearing about, many of them fled to Kurdistan. In fact, the uh, Kurdish regional president, Masoud Barzani, actually received an award from the Pope. So many of these refugees have fled into Kurdistan uh, because it's the best governed, most peaceful, uh, most fair place. And this, this, this brings us to an important point, and that is that the Kurds are very unusual in terms of the Middle East. They are pro-West, they are uh, pro-democracy, they are largely pro-Israel. Their Islam is uh, different? Their Islam is far more moderate. They have a Christian department in their government. Uh, they have an Azidi department in their government. Women sit on their Supreme Court. Women command troops in the Peshmerga, their word for their army. This is a moderate version of Islam, exactly what the United States should want to encourage. Things turning a little bit here. What more needs to be done to stop ISIS near the border there? Well, you've got, we've got to arm the Kurds directly, and that's something that the administration has been very hesitant to do. U.S. foreign policy has been based on the idea that we wanted a unified Iraq, so we wouldn't deal with the Kurds directly. Not going to happen, is it? It's just not going to happen. Baghdad is relatively corrupt, as we know, and the military pretty much abandoned the field when they came up against ISIS. But the Kurds stood solid, and now the administration has decided decided to uh, provision the Kurds and to arm the Kurds, and we're seeing a dramatic change. We're also seeing a dramatic change in Turkish policy towards the Kurds. So things are going in the right way. 
just at the beginning, and it's only because I think the U.S. has shown some strength. And some of the Kurds are coming to faith in Christ. Uh, tell me a little bit about that, and how can we as Christians in America pray for them? Well, we need to pray for them because they have been abused by their own Muslim brothers. Uh, Saddam wrapped himself in Islam to oppose and to destroy the Kurds, to commit his atrocities against them. There have been many, many valiant missionaries and ministers over there, and many Kurds are coming to Christ. And it's because that now there's a free marketplace of ideas, a free marketplace of religion, they're hearing who Jesus is. They're seeing that Christians have been some of the people most uh, caring about them and most supportive of them. And so as a result, we're seeing a great harvest there. Okay, very good. It's, a, it's an excellent read. I've Thank read you. it myself. The Miracle of the Kurds. Thank you, Stephen Mansfield, for being with us. Great to be with you. Thank you.